The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against God. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts, and let them return unto the Lord for he will have mercy upon them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So welcome to this uh, celebration uh, in the season after Epiphany. Um, and as we were joking uh, before, the themes of Epiphany are um, so vast and so wide that uh, we could talk about Epiphany, just the one feast for all of the time until we get to uh, to Lent. Um, and Nancy Carl will be uh, breaking open those themes uh, again today. Um, and uh, I thank her for uh, this bit of a break um, that, that she has afforded me. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to preaching next week. Um, and I look forward to hearing Nancy preach today. Um, so, we were also just talking about the corporate confession. Why don't we do that now? We're on page four of your prayer book. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, and to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a humble heart and, sorry, pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most Almighty merciful, merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we, have not ought, which we ought not to have done. And there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent according to thy promises declared unto us in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at the present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. O God, make speed to save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Let us say together the Vanity found on page six of your prayer book. Sorry, I'm just remind. It's been a while, so I need to remind myself of all the buttons to push in the settings. Page six, the Vanity. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, oh, that you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your forebears tempted me, proved me and saw my works, 40 years long was I grieved with that generation and said, it is a people that do err in their hearts for they have not known my ways and whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Uh, Nancy, I invite you to unmute and just remind me what the psalm is for Epiphany. Do you have that? Uh... It's uh, 72, but it's selected verses. Do you want me to read it? Uh, sure, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Psalm for the days, uh, selected verses from Psalm 72. Hear this word. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your peoples with righteousness and your poor poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people, give deliverance to the needy, defend the cause of the poor and the righteous, crush the oppressor. May he live while the sun endures, and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, showers that water the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him, all nations give him service. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence, he redeems their life and precious is their blood in his sight. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end, amen. And then straight into the epistle lesson, uh, Nancy. I don't have that one. Okay. Uh, bear with I can me. get it right quick. You too. 
uh, <laughs> running out of space here. Oh, I've got it right here. You got it? Okay. Ephesians 3. Yeah. So the first lesson is taken from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote about, uh, wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church the wisdom of God in each in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places this was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue on page seven of your prayer book. Let's, sorry, I'm slipping off my stool. Um, uh, let us say together the Te Deum. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the father of an infinite majesty, thine honorable, true, and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the comforter. Thou art the king of glory, O Christ, Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver us, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Never, never, let me never be confounded. Nancy, would you like to read the gospel lesson? I had included uh, the Old Testament 
passage? Shall I read that first and then oh, the gospel? Sure. Yeah. Okay. The, gospel, uh, the Old Testament passage is from Isaiah 60. The prophet Isaiah, the first 60, the first six verses. Hear this word. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your son shall come from far away, and your daughter shall be carried on their nurse's arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because of the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel passage is from Matthew chapter 2, the first 12 verses. This is the good news of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us continue on page nine of your prayer book and say together the benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would grant us, 
that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now let us profess the faith of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. O Lord, save the queen. And do thy ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save thy people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, make clean our hearts within us. Eternal God, who by a star led wise men to the worship of your Son, guide by your light the nations of the earth, that the whole world may know your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Nancy, I invite you to unmute yourself and uh, break open the word for us. And thank you again. Well, thank you for this opportunity once again. Let us pray. God of all good graces, we praise you for this greatest gift of, gift of all, your Son revealed to us in Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of our hearts be pleasing to you. Amen. The feast 
of Epiphany, I think, seems to be made to order for these days that we find ourselves in, the times that we're living through. It's themes of light and revelation, of God's universal love and sovereignty are important to hear when so many are faced with darkness, despair, and even desperation, great distress and danger. I found in looking through the lections for Epiphany that they're full of motion, movement, they're going someplace. And the Isaiah passage moves us from darkness to light, from shame to glory, from bondage to freedom, and from want to great abundance. And the psalm repeats those themes and adds the moves from violence to redemption and from oppression to deliverance. And all these moves in these two passages happen in the context of going home from a place of exile. Do you feel like you're exiled? Is this a place of exile for you? Maybe we can get the point that this is kind of made for us. When we look at the gospel, of course, we see that the Magi are on a journey as well. It's a literal, physical, and likely difficult journey. They also move from intellectual curiosity to a place of spiritual revelation and exuberant joy. Their journey begins with a phenomenon in the starry heavens, which arouses that curiosity and prompts a question. By their particular wisdom and understanding, they know and understand that the appearance of this star means royalty has been born. But, but where is he? Where is he? In our current circumstances, we might want to join in with the Magi and ask, where is he? Where is he? Where is God? It's regularly asked when circumstances are dark and oppressive and is actually a question that gets asked often in the history of God. The first time, actually, the accuser itself, the Satan, posed the question to Eve and Adam. A ploy it repeated without success in the temptation of Jesus. Where is God? Where is he? Later, Abraham and Sarah posed it in their old age. Where is God and God's promise of a child? Jacob posed it when he wrestled with an angel by the brook. Where is God and what is God's name? Moses posed it by the burning bush. Where is God? In a bush? In Egypt? And I think very memorably, remember that passage where Elijah passes on his mandate as prophet to his successor, Elisha? And Elisha picks up that cloak and smacks it against the water and says, where is the God of Elijah? Where is he? In hard times, the people of Israel asked it of their prophets. And in our gospel passage, the wise men and then Herod asked it, though for vastly different reasons. Throughout the ministry of Jesus, people asked, where is he? Where is he? Some were simply curious. Some wanted something from him, healing or help with a thorny issue. Some wanted to do away with him. And some women posed the question by an empty tomb. Where is he? 
And aren't there times in our own lives when we want to scream out, where is he? Where is he? In your own seeking, where do you look for him? Where do I look for him? Why do we look? Why do we seek? I suspect that those hearing this have, like the Magi, had your own epiphanies. When you're seeking, turn to an abundant burst of joy. It might have been something like this, what this scholar describes as epiphany. I found this in Feasting on the Word, a commentary on the lections, and it's uh, from Kendra Hotz, who was a professor at uh, Rhodes College, a Presbyterian school in Memphis, Tennessee. And she says this, epiphany, a moment when an important truth suddenly becomes clear and we can reinterpret our past and rethink our way forward in light of it. And then specific to our gospel reading, she adds, one of those moments when an event, the first revelation of Christ to the Gentiles, grabs hold of us and changes everything. Now the past makes sudden sense. Now the future calls for a new direction. Epiphany points us to God's universal love and universal sovereignty. End of quote. I think it's well worth our time to reflect on these themes of epiphany, the light, the revelation, finding, seeking. So the teacher in me wants to give you some holy homework for the next few days. Part one, think about this. What manifestation of God has so overwhelmed you that you were left speechless and stammering. Part two, what star, what light has guided you to the Christ, to God? Might be a person, an event, a thing. Part three, when you had such a revelation, what did you do? What gifts did you bring? That's enough. Jesus Christ himself has left us with three significant stars, so to speak, to guide us to him. The written word, of course, is what immediately comes to our minds. But there's also baptism and Eucharist. Our scriptures are, of course, the spirit-inspired written witness of God's history with God's people. Salvation history, sometimes it's called. When we read, study, mark, underline, and inwardly digest, one of the main questions we ask or should ask is, where is he? Where is God in this passage? Who is God? What is God saying to us in this passage? And we are assured also that the Holy Spirit is present with us continually and generally, even when we're asking, where is he? But in the specific sacramental moments in baptism and Eucharist, God in Jesus Christ holds out the promise of revealing to us God's nature as sovereign universal love. They are Christ's appointed reminders to us that God chose to come to us in flesh in Jesus Christ. 
their blatant physicality, baptism and Eucharist. You have to be in the water or have it on you. You have to eat and drink. Blatant physicality is why I think we miss them so much in these days when we must feed on him in our hearts by faith. Also, having an epiphany, as I suggested, demands a response. Remember the Magi's joy. It is described by the gospel writer in its full translation this way. Listen to this, it's astounding. Joy heaped on joy in great abundance. Does that cover it? I think so. Joy, great joy, abundant joy. That abundant joy prompted by their worship and their extravagant gifts. But lo and behold, there are some paradoxes in this story of seeking. God sent angels to look for Mary and Elizabeth, to seek out Mary and Elizabeth and announce the astounding news. God sought out Joseph by angels in dreams to challenge, guide, and reassure him. God sent angels to the shepherds to tell them where to look. God sent a star to the wise men to guide them on their way. The astounding revelation is that God comes seeking us. Gospel writer Luke reminds us, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save the lost. Where is he? Maybe you should look behind you or on either side instead of digging and searching away in the front. Maybe we should simply be still and know that he is God and that he finds us as so wonderfully expressed by the hymn writer with these words. I sought the Lord and afterward, afterward I knew he moved my soul to seek him, seeking me. It was not I that found, O Savior, true. No, I was found of thee. Thou didst reach forth thy hand and mine enfold. I walked and sank not on the storm-vexed sea. T'was not so much that I on thee took hold as thou, dear Lord, on me. I find I walk, I love, but oh, the whole of love is but my answer, Lord, to thee. For thou wast long beforehand with my soul, always thou lovest me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us uh, continue on page 12 of your prayer book in prayer. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, the parliaments of the Commonwealth, and all who are set in authority under her, that they may order all things in wisdom, righteousness, and peace to the honor of thy holy name and the good of thy church and people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Almighty and everlasting God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, send down upon our bishops and clergy and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. O God, the creator and preserver of all, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of people, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy goodness all those who are in any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or estate, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We pray this day for Sam, for Dion, for all who are afflicted and distressed uh, by the current um, public health and uh, precautionary restrictions. For those this day who find themselves in uh, isolation in uh, motels, I think it was nearly 300 in Windsor, Essex this day. Um, for foreign agricultural workers whose livelihoods are at this moment being turned upside down as their admissions are being halted. We pray for public officials who need to make tough decisions. that it may please thee, O God, to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience out of their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we then unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all, particularly to those who now offer up their praises and thanksgiving. We bless thee, O God, for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we shall forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen.
And now may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. I invite you at this time to unmute if you would like to, and uh, we can make a bit of holy noise uh, as we conclude with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all. With us all, evermore. Amen. Amen.